I think it's really important to talk about what deer actually need in their beds. I mean, obviously, I've talked about the layering effect where they need a food source, they need screening on that food source, then they need layers that help create more depth, and that allows for does to bed closer to that food source and bucks to bed in the interior of the property. But when deer are bedding, there's, there's a lot of confusion out there, you know, how to create a deer bed, how to create a buck bed. And I think this is a good illustration. We're gonna to walk to several beds around this area because it's full of beds because of the food plot up here that they're still hitting. And like I said, this is the first day after the season, so we can spook deer to our heart's content and we're not gonna worry about uh, hurting our hunt for next year or our herd management or our ability to create a structured uh, buck age uh, class on the property. If you can see right here, this deer bed, number one in green is side cover. They have to have this, this cover around them. And you'll notice there's a lot, a little bit of brush growing, hard re regeneration and uh, shrub tips, grasses, garbage, weeds that they can nip on. They have to have that regeneration, but they have to have side cover. And that kind of goes along with when you're creating hinge cuts. You're creating a hinge cut so that you have side cover, that waist high cover, and that provides both that side cover and that food. I started calling it side cover years ago. That's a a phrase that I coined and and I think it's a really good descript, description and descriptive phrase of what deer actually need and and we'll show you we'll go up to an area like this you know those deer could bed back in here you can see the canopy that's created naturally and they're not bedding under that canopy they're bedding off to the side where there's no canopy so there's an actual bed right here and they're not bedding under this canopy they're bedding right here where there's no canopy. Well, what do they have? They have this stump, they have good stem count, and they actually have a deer bed here. They don't need that canopy. There's a lot of canopy up in here. They're not crawling under there, they don't need it. And it doesn't offer them any protection. When we get down here, we'll show you some more beds. And these are just, you know, random areas that they're choosing to bed back here. Again, they're gonna bed on that flat down there. So we can see that flat before it drops off. We know there's gonna be beds there and we'll go down and look at them. This is a really cool little illustration right here. We haven't been to this location. In fact, like I've said, I haven't been in this area of the property ever. So it's pretty cool, but it's dropping off down there. We have the steeper slope here. The beds that we were first at are right up there and there's another bed beside it. There's three beds. Then we get right here. Part of side cover is a hill. So when we have this hill going up, it's side cover. Now, no matter which way the wind is blowing, those deer are gonna sit facing that way and away from this hill. They don't want their nose right into the hill where they have to constantly look up. They're gonna be looking down. They can hear anything coming from above, regardless of which way the wind's blowing, but they're not gonna stare into their cover. It's no different if they are bedded right here next to the stump. They're not gonna stare into that stump all day. It takes out their entire vision. But what they do, here's a bed right here, another bed right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six beds in this location. And that looks about it for right here. But they're all relating to the side cover of the hill, the side cover of the stumps around them. They have a little bit of browse that they can get up and feed on around here. We're gonna magnify that greatly by cutting these layers of bedding in here where they're lengthy and they're parallel in the habitat or the food plot up above. So we're gonna create that bedding. But notice, no canopy over them. They just have side cover. In fact, this one's in a little pocket. You have the hill going up right here. They have a big stump right there, stump right here, and then you jump down to this one. Another flat related to the side cover of this tree. No canopy. Then you get back down here. Another bed right here. There's another bed right down there. Another bed here, here. And look at that, commanding view. So they sit, they sit facing this way. Side cover is a hill going up. You have some trees and that's where they choose to bed. You know, no, no canopy at all. We're gonna go back up here and find some more. I know there's some more, because you can look uphill right here. And you can see them nipping on the end of this in their bedding area. Now, if you look up there, you see a, quite a bit of blowdowns and junk timber. And within there, there'll be some more beds. Now, here's another bedding uh, bed right here. Another bed right there. And they're relating to this hillside. You have all this down timber up here. And I know there's a couple beds in the timber because we were just up over here to the side, but no canopy. 
side cover very important to find side cover let's go up here and look for a couple more bed right there there's a couple more beds right down there they have areas where they could tuck up under canopy but they're choosing to relate to side cover and side cover will win out over canopy every single time so when you're creating beds on your own property focus on side cover don't worry about creating canopy that's one of the michigan myths we'll have in a video coming up let's go look for a couple more we'll end with this one because this is a good one see the hardwood regeneration the deer are nipping on that deer can bed here it's got protection of all the down timber here the stumps and debris right here but in this location lots of browse pretty decent stem count again we're going to put that on steroids we've got a beautiful oak right here we're going to take down some of these smaller trees in between our mature oaks here and um, promote that hardwood regeneration and also promote a lot more side cover we want to give them a lot of browse for the daytime hours they can get up and just move around here within just a quarter acre and sufficiently bed here all day long and be well fed and then go up and hit the food plot right up here but again side cover of the stumps right here and the debris the regeneration we're circling right back to the bed we first started at right here again we'll end with some cocoa puffs <laughs> we used to call them with the kids when we were scouting up in the up of michigan more of a medium-sized pellet doesn't matter if they're together if they're mushed together or if they're separate that just depends on what they're eating trust me if they're eating stigs and sticks and twigs and hardwood regeneration all day the the pellets are typically not going to be clumped together they're going to be separate if they're eating a lot of greens the brass up there and they're getting all that moisture in their diet then it's possible to be more clumped together but the consistency of their pellets is going to be determined by what they eat not if they're a buck or doe those are medium-sized pellets probably an average sized doe maybe yearling buck but uh, definitely not those big pellets of a of a big monster buck but again though those deer were circling right back to this original bed here and what's that I, I wasn't counting but probably close to 10 11 12 beds in this area you know could have been used by the same four deer they mo just moving around in here but great side cover in here whether it's this down timber the regeneration various stumps from the last cutting that were, that took place in this in this woods and and that's what deer need that's that number one ingredient is that side cover they use it for regeneration in that food source and that browse they need during the day during in their bedding areas and then of course they use it for cover if you're cutting your cover up high or someone do, someone is doing it for you on your land where you can look right under that cover it's a waste of a resource where you're putting that food and that cover at head high for us above a deer's mouth and that need for that cover down at this level and i hope that's a good illustration here we're blessed with a lot of a lot of beds in here I, um, we're trying to build the, the herd on this parcel we had a lot of bucks um, not as many does so we chose not to shoot any does this year but i imagine next year we'll need to shoot two or three or three or four you know depending on the population and and we take a look at that every year but uh always think about side cover and as it relates to deer bedding, whether you're creating it on your own property or finding it on public land this off season and going into the next hunting season. Now, as we transition into habitat season, I hope you've had a chance to check out my web class, how to design your web, your whitetail parcel. It's on my website, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. I have a link in the description and I hope you can find it, check it out and enjoy it this year.